Last year I went into Selfridges and I literally just went to the first makeup counter I could find and it happened to be MAC and I basically made them just do whatever. Here's a blank canvas, show me what I need to do. And I came out with all these products and that's like my go-to routine. I put my primer on, color corrector, concealer, foundation, and I really like it and I don't know why it took me so long to figure this out. It means I have saved so much time and effort and money on just buying random stuff. Because <laughs> my approach before with makeup, because I was quite intimidated by makeup, I was quite embarrassed because I didn't know what I was doing with makeup. So I would never go to the counter and I would just go to the store, look at the products on the shelves and be like, oh, I think that's my color. And I didn't know things like color correcting. I have dark circles, so I had to put red color correction on and stuff like that, that I would never have figured out on my own. Sometimes you gotta just like get over your embarrassment and that's like a good rule for life in general, right? Like cringe is just a concept, like it's not real. It's only real if you make it a real thing. Like embarrassment, you can just choose not to be embarrassed. It's quite hard because we've been like trained to think that way, but you can literally just train yourself to not be embarrassed. And that is like a massive superpower if you can do that. You will be unlocking so many doors. One thing I've been watching a lot lately are videos about discipline. Sometimes when I feel like I have to get a job done, my body is filled with so much stress, so much like negative feelings of like, you're not doing enough, you're being lazy, you're gonna regret this, I feel guilt, I feel shame. And none of that emotion is helpful. Yeah, okay, maybe sometimes I'll motivate you to do the thing, but if you're gonna feel horrible about yourself the whole time you're doing that thing, your brain's not gonna wanna do that thing again, right? So I don't think that attitude helps with discipline. But unfortunately, that's what a lot of us maybe feel like. What I have found has helped is when I have things that I need to get done, I take a step back and I just do something really chill, really calm, really relaxing, really present and mindful for like a good hour. Whether that's like making myself breakfast and then journaling for a bit. And once I've got myself into a more regulated state, a much calmer state, I'm then in a better mind space to be more disciplined. I feel like it needs to come from a much more calm, positive space where you feel good about yourself rather than like, I'm not doing enough, I need to do more, which is what I was like pretty much my whole life. I mean, yes, I got the results, but my mental health massively paid for it. Careful not to do too much. I've been working really hard in trying to be more regulated lately. It's a very much a work in progress. I feel like my moods and how I'm feeling changes every day. And some days are good, some days are bad, and that's okay. It's just part of being a human. I don't know why I freak out every time I put that on. And that is my makeup done. It took like, what, 10, 15 minutes whilst I would chat with you guys? Oh, but now I'm making a mess, so I'm gonna go now. Okay, that's get ready with me with Taz. I will speak to you guys in a bit, bye. Oh, wow. That looks and smells incredible. You got an avocado online. Coriander. Hot. Today's dinner is chicken stew, which is really hot. Ow. And some guacamole, courtesy of my neighbor. I mentioned in my last vlog how I have made friends with my neighbor and it is the most wholesome thing ever. We became really close really quickly. Uh, I think it helps when you like have someone in close proximity, but we genuinely just get on so well. And they have kindly offered me their chicken stew. So yeah, this is that. When they messaged me about it, I was like cooking. So I then offered them my cooking. I don't know if they're gonna appreciate my cooking. Also, I was kind of embarrassed because they gave their food in like, like re these really nice containers. And the only containers I have at the moment are my Toy Story ones. So I have like a set of Toy Story containers. And they're literally the only containers I have. So she brought her food in such lovely glassware. And I gave my food in like Toy Story containers. I think that pretty much sums up our dynamic. But yeah, that is the most wholesome thing ever. I think the act of sharing food with people is the most purest love language. I don't know if I can show it to you. It looks incredible. It's got a lot of veggies in it. I think my body definitely needs veggies. I feel like I didn't drink enough water today. That's not good. It looks so good. Oh my God, that is so good. I've never made a stew. I don't even know how to make stews. I've never attempted to make one. So I'm looking at this and I wouldn't really know how to make it. Maybe I can learn. Maybe I can ask her to teach me. Oh, so flavorful. It just feels, you know when food feels like when you eat it, it's like 
nourishing your inside. This feels really wholesome and hearty and warm, which is actually how I would describe this person. So I feel like this is a perfect encapsulation of what this person is like. And I feel like my dish that I gave them is kind of an encapsulation of what I'm like, because it's quite chaotic, it's quite random, it's just a bunch of things put together, and we just hope it works. So yeah, I think that's quite cute. I'm not sure how I'm supposed to eat the guac though. Do I just like pour it into this? I don't know. Mmm. Oh, that is nice. The flavors are so fresh. I really like it. Okay, now I'm gonna have to ask her to teach me how to make this, because it's so good. When I went to Korea, I went a little crazy and bought a gazillion amount of socks. 28 pairs to be exact. If I can find the picture of them all, I will put it here. And the main reason I got them, because A, they were really cute. Like there were so many cool designs and it worked out that they were only like a pound. So I spent 28 pounds on 28 pairs of socks. This is one of them, right? It's so cute. It's got like teddy bears on it and it like, is raised, it's not all flat. And I feel like a pair of socks, like this design, would be like at least six quid in London. I don't know, don't correct me on that, but I feel like socks, good quality design socks like this, I feel like they're kind of expensive. And it's all really good quality. These are the other designs. Now, I do not need 28 pairs. So when I first bought them, a cute thing that I did with my friends was I would basically like lay them all out there and let them pick whichever sock they wanted. And that was just like such a cute, wholesome thing. Like we all have our own cute little socks. I really like cute things like that. Like I like cute socks. I like cute mugs. I just wanted to share my socks with you because I think they're really cute. I watched this TikTok where they were talking about how they hate doing laundry. Like that's their worst um chore which is wild to me like i've seen a couple of tiktoks like this like people really don't like doing laundry like to them that is the worst chore to do which is so wild because to me it's one of the best ones because it requires no thinking like I can just do this mindlessly and like shut off. I can watch something while I'm doing my laundry and all that. It requires literally no brain work whatsoever. Whereas cooking, like you kind of have to focus, right? You kind of have to have a level of focus, especially if you're me, because I'll blim and burn myself or something. So it's fascinating that people don't like to, like that's the worst one. I feel like there are so many other worse tasks to do than laundry, like mopping. I am not a mopper. And I know this because I literally haven't mopped once in this fact, which is so bad. I need to buy a mop. I actually do need to buy a mop. This is such a boring question to ask, but it's important for me. If you guys have any recommendation for mops, let me know because I've always grown up with like the standard mop, you know, where it gets all like grim and gross and I don't like it. You know, the basic ones, the cheapy ones that you buy from like a corner shop. But I saw those flash mops. Now I have never used a flash mop before but it's one of those ones where you need a detergent for it and you need to buy the wipes for it now i saw them i think it was in sainsbury's and i was like should i invest in this but because i've never used it before i don't know if it's a worthy investment so if anyone has used if i can find an image of what i'm talking about i'll put it here because i feel like this how i'm explaining it might be a bit confusing but yeah if you have used that let me know let me know if you would recommend it wow my life is so exciting this is as exciting as it gets in the taz household i have some leftover rice and i've also got a lot of kimchi left in this bag and i figured i should probably finish this off before it explodes in my fridge apparently it's called burping thank you for letting me know in the comments um apparently you have to open the bag or something it's and this whole process is called you gotta burp the kimchi I did not know that was a thing. There's also not instructions saying you need to do that. I'm gonna attempt to make kimchi fried rice since I have two of the main ingredients for it. And that's my attempt at kimchi fried rice. I very much winged it. I don't think this is actually how it's made, but um, I'm really hungry and I just needed something quick. And those were the two things I saw in my fridge. So therefore that is what I'm having. Lovely star. It tastes really tangy. I don't know if that means it's just fermented or if it's gone off. It's been in my fridge for a while since I've opened it. Oh wow. Well. I guess we'll find out when I get food poisoning. My hoover is broken. My neighbor has kindly offered me their hoover for me to use until I find a replacement. They have like two hoovers, so they gave me their spare one, which is incredibly kind. And now that I am like hoovering with it, 
It's making me realize just how bad my current one is. My current one doesn't pick up anything. And I have a thing with like seeing dirt on the floor. It really like, I like things to be like, clear and clean and empty. So like this is an absolute lifesaver. This is my Hoover. It's a shark one and it's a chargeable like cordless one where you can just go around and use it. I prefer this style because it means I don't have to like plug in every room to use it, but it just doesn't pick up. It's just really not that good. So now I'm trying to figure out a replacement. And for the longest time I was like against this style of hoover where you gotta like plug in every room but now that i'm using it it's like way better it has like a lot more power but i don't know maybe i have to invest in the hoover like that i don't know i just want a hoover that's not gonna like stop working after a couple years like that's not great you want to have something that you can like really invest in that's gonna last a long time and i'm thinking should i get one of these ones but anyway other than that very grateful for my neighbor for allowing me to use a hoover until i like buy one. I am eating some dumplings that I have overcooked to an absolute crisp. Put a load of sambal on it though, haven't I? Oh, oh. I've had pretty poor customer service experiences with companies. I talked about it when I first moved into this place, right? The moving company broke my desk and then I tried calling them for months and they just wouldn't answer. I didn't give you guys an update on that. This was wild. So it turns out a lot of you guys um, commented or like wrote in their reviews, giving them a bad review. And literally, as soon as you guys did that, they personally called me. So based, bear in mind, I've been trying to call this company for two months and no one was picking up. It wouldn't even go through. As soon as you guys wrote the comments, I got a call straight away. I don't know from who, maybe the owner. And they were like, yeah, what's the, how much did you pay for it? We'll cover it. And he refunded me there and then. And then after he did that, that's when he explained, he said, oh, by the way, can you get your friends to stop writing like negative reviews? And then that's when I realized, oh, that's why he's calling me and sorting it out because of that. Which is just so sad. The fact that it's only because you guys wrote those reviews that he actually did something about it. But if that wasn't the case, then... I probably would have never got a refund for my desk. Um, and it's just so bad that companies just get away with stuff like that. And so recently I got a filter service. So it's basically that, that got serviced, right? And usually it's covered with a panel. And this, my friends, is the panel. The engineer who came and looked at it couldn't put it back up. So now I just have a panel that's just like lying down. And it's meant that all my stuff is like outside the storage cupboard which is not great. So like, that's not ideal. But on top of that, the engineer was like two hours late with no communication. Like they didn't tell me when they're gonna arrive. And then to top it all off, when they left, they asked if they can use the bathroom. And obviously I was like, yeah, go ahead, you know? But I didn't realize that they were gonna do a number two. So the guy was late, the panel wasn't like put in its place. And then they took a dump before they left. And I was like, wow this service is pretty bad. I told the company about this. I didn't tell them about the dump because that's just, I just felt uncomfortable, but I just told them about this and stuff. And they said that like, oh, they couldn't put the panel up because there's stuff in the way, like the shelving unit. But like that shelving unit is like, like that in this flat, like it's built in. It's not something you can remove. So there's no way I could have removed that. And we removed everything that was on the shelf. And when the guy, the engineer, couldn't put the panel back up, he literally said in that moment, he was like, oh, I'm just too old, I can't lift it, I haven't got the strength. He didn't mention anything about things being in the way. And they apologized for being late and not communicating. But yeah, I just felt like they weren't really, they didn't really do anything about it. And then I told my neighbor about it. And it turns out my neighbor really likes complaining. So um, they complained. And I don't know what he said, but when he complained, he managed to, so I paid the invoice in full. It was like 300 quid and I paid the invoice in full. He spoke on the phone to them for like half an hour. And apparently, it hasn't come through yet, so I don't know, but apparently he managed to get me like a hundred and somewhat pounds off. So I'm hoping that I get a refund because I paid in full. But it's crazy that like these companies won't do anything unless you kick up a fuss. And I'm someone who just like, I'm not really that kind of person. I don't really like, I don't like chasing things up. I don't like complaining. I don't like that negative energy. I just wish people would just did the right thing, the decent thing. So yeah, it's just interesting in both cases. When I try to do the right thing and call and explain, they didn't do anything about it. 
but when you guys wrote the comments on their reviews and when my neighbor complained on the phone that's when they got like the results and it just I don't know it just feels a bit like exhausting that you have to do this every single time that you can't just like expect a certain level of service if you guys have ever had a negative experience with a company in terms of customer service and you feel comfortable can you please share your stories in the comment section below because i kind of want to know how it's been for other people and what kind of experience they've had my neighbor said they'll help me put the panel back up if i didn't have my neighbor i don't know what i would have done in that situation what would have been the right approach to take in these kind of situations i don't know if you have any experience in that and you want to help a girl out and guide her in the right direction let me know i will let you guys know if i do get my refund back be interesting. Other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed this vlog. Thank you so much for watching. I love you lots. Please know they matter and I shall see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.